Ball's out. Ball's out, and I think the Titans have it. And the man who's there to recover it is Simmons. The Titans have the ball. Over to the goal line. They went with the Utah pass to butt. He did not make it. Welcome you to the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola. I'm Mike Keith and this is Coach Dave McGinnis from Titans Radio. And you're probably saying, where's Mike Vrabel? It is the Mike Vrabel Show. Well, he and the team have already headed back to Nashville. It's Tuesday. They got to get ready for Jacksonville. So we're going to take you through this show and we're glad to do it because coming off a 16 to 14 win here in Denver, you're always happy to be 1-0, even though it was hard to get it. No, no, no. Wins are too hard to come in this league. Never be mad about a win. Never. Cardinal rule in the National Football League. Never be mad about a win. Give me your overview of how this one went and why it was significant to win it. I thought the Titans outplayed them in this, in this ball game. They left, they left 10 certain points out there on the field. And if they, if they convert those 10 points, it's a whole different feel. What they did do, Mike, they showed some real mental toughness. They continued with the mental toughness and the resiliency this team showed at the end of last year. We're talking about carryover. That carried over big time tonight. The number of fans here right now at Empower Field at Mile High, the same number of fans that were here for the ball game. 35 years you've spent in the National Football oh. League. How strange is it to play at a place like this with no fans? It's just so strange. It really is. And especially this is one of the best outdoor venues in the National Football League. This place is usually just bringing the house down here. It was really strange, but it was so good to get a game in. My phone is just blown up with text. People, people enjoyed it. People like National Football League football. And winning. And winning. Let's take a look at the six pack. And in honor of Coach Vrabel, we want to start with complimentary football. Play number one comes early in the second quarter. Titans down seven to nothing. He's an all pro. He used to punt for the Broncos. It's Brett Kern, a 66 yard punt to get things started. Cannot overemphasize what a weapon he is. This guy is a, is a valuable, valuable tool for this football team. He really is because what he does, he makes field position for your defense. Thus, if your defense plays well, it gets field position for your offense. They were doing some nice things tonight. They were using a slot punt with a running gunner playing from the slot, and he had to directional punt where the running gunner from the slot was, hit it perfect every time. Every single time. The second play comes shortly after that great punt. It's two of your best players on defense. Kevin Byard with his first ever career forced fumble and it's Big Jeff himself coming up with the recovery. That was, that was so big. I mean, first of all, Byard was so aware to punch that ball out. But Jeffrey Simmons coming from the inside out to get over there and cover that ball. What did he run, 18 miles an hour you know, on the, on the GoPro or whatever that is? All night, I thought his ball game was really, really good because he was making plays not only straight ahead, but the big man was covering ground left and right. Very impressive. We're going to let you talk about him a little further in our next segment. Not to spoiler alert, give it away, but we'll, we'll discuss Jeffrey Simmons some more. Third big play of the night, the touchdown that followed to tie the game. Ryan Tannehill to Michael Pruitt, what a catch. 
It was a great catch. He did about a 360 to get that to get that ball. And you know what? Tannehill's got such confidence in his receivers. He puts it within their catch radius. They'll make the catch for him. It was a it was a pretty much an acrobatic catch because he was covered. Then the Titans get a goal line stand, and one of the better tackles came on third down. You watch this pop on Gordon. Oh, absolutely. And Gordon's tired of playing the Titans on the goal line. He really is. I mean, he's he's had a little rough luck against us on the goal line. But a goal the goal line stand. I mean, that was huge because they Denver had gotten the momentum back a little bit then, and and to stop them down there like they did, really big. Play number five came early in the fourth quarter after the Titans dominated the third quarter. Early in the final period, the Titans get a touchdown pass on fourth down. Yeah, and, and I love the call. I mean, the call was great. They, they jammed all the, all the big men in there. They jammed them in there. They had 22 people right up on the line of scrimmage. And then, you know, uh, Jonu wide open in the corner of the end zone. Nice call. Jonu Smith, four catches, 36 yards in the ball game, playing well again. The Titans, though, see the Broncos come back, take the lead 14-13, and then after two big defensive stops, Tennessee goes on a 12-play, 83-yard drive, Ryan Tannehill's 17th career game-winning drive, and they call on the legend himself, Steven Goskowski, who had not had a very good night, but he put it through the uprights to win. Yeah, full disclosure, Mike Keith, you said when that drive started, you looked at me and you went, Coach Mack, it's going to come down to a field goal, and he's going to make it. Guess what happened? Came down to a field goal, he made it. Well, you're really proud of this guy because to be 0 for 3 for the first time in his career and miss an extra point, a guy who said after the game, embarrassed. And, and that's what kind of a pro he is. But he made it, and hopefully he can take that and build on it. Tough on him coming off the surgery and not having had much time with the team. Too. No, and, and, and really you could tell that he really didn't quite have his swing down because he missed one left, one right, got one blocked up the middle. But he made the one at the end. Titans win. Let's move on to next week. Let's move on to next week. Let's do that. <laughs> coming up later in the show, we're going to talk with one of the toughest Titans, Amy Wells. Uh, has a chat with him, but up next, it's our Bridgestone Clutch performance of the game as we continue on the Mike Vrabel Show from Denver with Coach Mack, presented by Coca-Cola. Welcome you back to Denver and the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola. Mike Keith along with Dave McGinnis. Coach Max sitting in for Coach Vrabel as the team uh, on a short week getting ready for Jacksonville. We'll talk about that more later in the show. But time now for the Bridgestone Clutch performance of the game. And we selected Big Jeff himself, Jeffrey Simmons, made several huge plays in the ball game, was a disruptor. But let's talk about the goal line stand. It's fourth and one, and it really looks like Denver has a good call. Drew Locke, who can run, looks like he's going to run, and then he throws the Utah pass, the shuffle pass, to Jake Butt, who runs into Big Jeff. Big Jeff. It was really a nice call down there. I mean, I, I, liked, I liked the call. It had a lot of deceptive to it. But for Jeffrey Simmons to be able to play it, that's a, that's a tough play for a defensive lineman because most of the times they're trying to get down there on all fours and root hog and just knock people back. He was able to stay alive. He recognized the play, made a huge, huge tackle. His awareness this year, we had talked earlier about his confidence and his comfortability that, that, that's going on with him right now. He's so confident now in what's going on in there. We're starting to see the Jeffrey Simmons that we all vetted coming out of Mississippi State. Jeffrey Simmons was in the knee brace this time last year, was coming off a knee surgery a year and a half ago. So I just wonder, with that knee brace gone, the play that he made on butt, recovering the fumble, being able to pursue and run to the ball, could he have made those plays last season? No, he didn't have his lateral mobility last year, and he admitted that. He was never comfortable in the brace. And when you watched him play at Mississippi State, Mike, that was the thing that was so unusual about him. He not only had the big power strength of the knot back, he was a guy that could make plays laterally. And that's really important when you can get your big guys running. You can snuff out a lot of plays. The fumble recovery was a great instance of that, and also his ability to change direction and be aware in the short box in there in the in the in the center guard tackle box that was so so big he would never have made those plays last year he didn't have that lower body flexibility last year with that brace I like so much about Jeffrey Simmons game but one of the things that he has is he's a hustler 
and, and a lot of big dudes like, like him are not hustlers, but he is always running to the ball, trying to make a play. He wants to tackle the dude with the football. Well, and if you're going to have a good defense or an elite defense in this league, you've got to run to the football constantly. I mean, it's got to be everybody to the ball for all the snaps that you're out there because there are so many plays in, in the National Football League that it takes a little extra effort to keep it from getting away from you. We saw that great examples of that from Jeffrey Simmons that were really game-changing plays. He is a tough Titan, no doubt. But the Rackley roofing tough Titan this week is Taylor Lewan. He's coming up with Amy Wells later in this edition of the Mike Vrabel Show. But up next, Coach Vrabel had to get in his Delta Dental pick. His Delta Dental guessed the Titan. He taped one with us right after a practice because he said, I know I can't be on the show, but I love the Delta Dental feature, so I've got to make a guess. How did he do? You'll see coming up on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Coca-Cola. The only thing about being one and know, we had a chance to go two and know. Titans beat the Broncos last night here in Denver, 16 to 14. Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Coca-Cola. Dave McGinnis, would you call Mike Vrabel a competitive person? Absolutely. Yes, he is. Absolutely. He wants to win at everything, which is why when we told him, hey, we know you're not going to be on this week's show, he said, I, I got to do Delta Dental. Oh, that's great. I got to get it. I got to <laughs> guess the Titan. Again, he came in after a practice to take his shot. See how Coach Vrabel <laughs> did. All right, Coach, so all summer long, people have been asking me, how will Mike Vrabel do on the Delta Dental Guess the Titan in 2020? Your season last year went great. Your numbers in this feature on your show, not quite as good. And you were ready to take a shot at it, ready to go here. You want to be I, one I for one. I missed this all off season. I am ready to get off to a great start with Delta Dental. It's my favorite segment, so let's see what we have. All right, so here we go. Here's the shot of the player. From Delta Dental, can you guess this Titan? I mean, that looks like a boy with thighs like that. That looks like a defensive lineman. Uh, I'm going to say. Now, stop and think about it. You don't have to go fast. You've got a second. This is a larger child. That's true. Big legs, but analyze the face here. Take your time. So you're basically telling me it's not a defensive lineman. That's a good redirect. I appreciate that. Could be. It's a large person, so it's an offensive lineman. It is Roger Saffold. Is that your final guess? No, it's not. No, okay. no, no. I just was okay. saying it could be Roger Saffold. It could be Roger Saffold. But who is it, Mike Vrabel? It is Michael Pruitt. Michael Pruitt. Let's reveal who is this Titan from Delta uh -huh. Dental. You had the position. He looks like him. It looks like Janu. Can you not see it? No, no, no. There's a glare. There's a glare on this thing. So we're going to have to fix this for the rest of the season. There's a glare. This from the guy who never makes an excuse. <laughs> who never. There are no excuses. Come on. Mike, you wouldn't be acting this way if I was sitting right next to you. So no, stop I all because that. Because you would just grab me. Exactly. I'd probably shake that blazer that you normally have on with the pocket square. Well, one of the reasons that we wanted to do this, you love to talk about John o. Smith because you love his work ethic. You love what he brings to the football team. And as we've watched him preparing for the start of this season, we've seen the same great things out of John. O. Well, he's got such a great attitude. He comes to work every day with a willingness to improve. He is engaged. He is locked in. He's a great teammate and he continues to get better. And, and, I, and I can appreciate that because it's not like he's arrived. If we had some success, or John who caught a few passes, and he, he's always trying to work. He's trying to get better, and he's trying to build that relationship with the quarterback and also, you know, help us out in a run game and, and get those plays started on the edge. And one of the all-time great guys, too. Love him to death. Coach, thank you for taking time with us. When we get together next week, hopefully you get to one for two on the Delta Dental. One for two or one and one, right? You always get me confused with that. <laughs> Starts 0 for 1. You know what? That makes me very sad. But I, I, I promise you, Mike Vrabel would take 0 for 1 on Delta Dental and 1 and 0 with this game. We all will. <laughs> but thanks to our friends at Delta Dental for being part of the show. And thanks for Rackley Roofing for sponsoring the Tough Titan of the Week. Amy Wells is standing by with that guy, number 77, Taylor Lewan, after a break on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Coca-Cola.
have a new series that we are calling the Tough Titan, and there is no better person to start off than the ultimate Tough Titan, Taylor Lewan. Taylor, it is so good to see your face. It's good to have you here. Yeah, it does feel a little uncomfortable with us being in different rooms, but I'm glad to be here, glad to be noticed as a Tough Titan, although I feel like there's a couple others that do deserve the bed as well. One of the things that you have been known for is your toughness on the field. Have you always been this tough, or was there a time that you were maybe a little timid? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, when I was in third grade, I was a corner when I played Pop Warner for the Scottsdale Shockers. And the next year, I was a quarterback, and I actually quit because I didn't want to get tackled. The year after that, I played hockey. I was trying out for a Pee Wee team, and that was like the first year they allowed checking. I got checked one time. Some behemoth nine-year-old checked me. When the play was over, the whistle blew. From that moment, I was done with hockey forever. So. I, I don't know if I'm, I'm any tougher. I'm definitely better at faking it nowadays. I do enjoy, it makes it easy to be tough when you have a guy like Roger Saffold you're playing right next to. Well, you've also been a Tennessee Titan for a while. What is different about this year, maybe with current circumstances excluded? What's different about Taylor Lewan? You know, I think it's hard for me to think about what's different without the circumstances of this year, right? With COVID, it gave me a huge opportunity to spend more time with my family, spend time with what's really important is that's, you know, getting to see my, my oldest now and bringing my new daughter into this world and becoming a true girl dad. It's been, it's been unbelievable. So the toughness factor does kind of go out the window with them. But for me, I've taken a step forward in the leadership category. I, I've said before, it was about how do I start the way I finished last year? And how do we start as an offense the way we finished last year? What maybe tangible ways have you been working on that leadership role within the locker room throughout training camp in the beginning of the season? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is just keeping the important thing the important thing. There's a time for me to be able to goof around, have a good time with the boys. But when I get on the field, it's trying to keep my craft sharp and making sure I have the tools when I go into the season to be successful. We use the term leading from the front quite a bit. And I try to do that literally and figuratively. If you're well conditioned, you're able to work through this hard practices, especially in Tennessee in August. It's very hot, it's very humid, and it's tough to get through. So for me, just kind of trying to push through and helping other guys with their techniques, the best leadership I can do is just being the best left tackle I can be and continuing where I left off from last year. So that's been the goal from day one. I have my own individual goals also, but the biggest thing is this team and getting a win. Starting your seventh season with the team, you've seen some lows and you've seen some highs. How are you helping this team manage the expectations of a team that's coming off of a trip to the AFC Championship game? I think the first thing is you have to stop thinking about going to the AFC Championship game last year, right? Every year is a new year, and you know, Vrabel brought up a good point. You don't want to be like the stock market. You're up one day, you're down the other. You want to be consistent and uh, make sure you're growing each and every single day and just getting a little bit better. So good to see you. Guys, there is so much more coming up on the Mike Vrabel Show. Stick around. Tennessee Titans are 1-0 as we bring you this edition of the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola. Coach Dave McGinnis has got our Nissan keys to beating Jacksonville, Sunday's opponent at Nissan Stadium. Let's talk about rhythm to begin with. The Titans cannot let Jags quarterback Gardner Minshew get going. You can't go to sleep on Gardner Minshew. He's already proven that he's a gamer. We saw what he did against Indianapolis. You can't go to sleep on this guy. This football team at Jacksonville, they believe in their quarterback. He can make plays. We have got to be able to contain him. When he makes the broken play and the off-schedule play, that's when he's really dangerous. And don't underestimate his arm. 19 of 20 passing against Indianapolis, and the one pass he missed was a drop. Well, that's pretty good. Isn't that's it? very good, absolutely. All right, you know who's very good against Jacksonville normally? Derrick Henry, his hometown team. Titans need that again. That's key number two. Well, they need that big. They need that big time from Derrick Henry. And you and you saw what happened when we played Denver. They kept feeding him the ball. To have a good run game in the National Football League, Mike, you've got to be patient with it because every run is not going to break big. What Henry have? His longest run was 13 yards against Denver. Still, he goes over 100, and he helped control the ball game. We're going to need that and more against Jacksonville. Final key: these games between the Titans and the Jags are always physical. You got to maintain your poise. Now, you, you always talk about. Coaching, if anything gets into a scuffle, walk away. You've got to be able to walk away. You've got to keep your composure. You can play to the echo of the whistle, and you can play very physical, but don't do anything after the whistle that hurts your football team. We got away with one in Denver. We cannot let that happen. And these games against Jacksonville, they're a tad bit chippy anyway. <laughs> to say the least. And it's for first place in the AFC South this time. 
1 0 Jacksonville, 1 0 Tennessee, Sunday at Nissan Stadium. Kickoff is set for noon. We'll have it for you on Titans Radio beginning at 11 a.m. with Titans Countdown. Thanks for doing this. Oh, this is great. Because we're 1 0. No, we're 1 0. That's yeah, right. If it was 0 1, I wouldn't even be standing here. He would have just left. I might have <laughs> just left. For Dave McGinnis, filling in for Mike Vrabel, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us for the Mike Vrabel Show from Denver, presented by Coca Cola.